So without further ado, we would like to call the first speaker and the first presenter, Mr. Chris Benhard Armada from RMIT University, who will present the Urban Infrastructure Development with Internet of Things, IoT. Uh, So good. Um, whenever you're ready, you you will have uh, around 15 minutes with yeah, 10 minutes of questions. Okay, great. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Benhart Armanda. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, and uh, th this evening, I will be presenting about urban infrastructure development with IoT. I actually think that this part of my might be too long, so I would like to. Uh, so we'll continue by splitting. Them into definitions, so we can and we can begin with uh, in the same in, in the same step to understand what I'm going to talk about tonight. <laughs> Next, so I'd like to start with definitions. Uh, what is actually IoT? IoT uh, can be defined as interconnected network of devices that can be controlled or monitored remotely, and to acquire data or to modify the behavior of those devices. Uh, maybe you have uh, heard. So, uh, some concepts like smart homes, and where, uh, where you can control or monitor the, uh, the situations in, uh, in your house where, where you are where, when you are working at, at the office, or may, maybe you are staying outside or uh, out of town. So, uh, so IoT will uh, will help you uh, secure uh, secure your houses, or for, uh, or even doing simple banal things like changing the uh, changing your TV channels when you're bored. Some examples of IoT capable devices are these three uh, three things that I uh, that I'm currently working on for my uh, personal project. One is called Arduino. The second one is Raspberry Pi, and the third one is called ESP8266. I'm not. Uh, I I really don't want to uh, get technical here, but uh, uh, but they are they are very cheap devices that uh, that you can build your own personal project with. Uh, for example, Arduino only costs uh, cost you around forty dollars to, uh, to create one single project. Raspberry Pi is uh, is a computer that uh, computer that really is the size of uh, of a common credit card. You can hold it on your hands, and it runs uh, and it runs on operating systems like Linux. Uh, and it costs around twenty four Australian dollars. And the third one, ESP eight two six six, is actually a uh, uh, what, what my professor is calling the next step for IoT devices because it's so cheap, it only costs you two dollars, and it can and it can well revolutionize the, uh, the, our our knowledge of IoT. Next, now uh, I would like also to touch on the uh, on the concept of smart city. What is exactly a smart city? When you ask different people, you will have different definitions. So there is no one single agree and agree definitions. The definition of smart city in Jakarta might be. Well, it might be well different with the smart, uh, smart city in Europe, which I will be talking about later on. And uh, for, uh, for these purposes of, the, uh, of this presentation, I would, uh, I, would like to, yeah, I would like to offer you one simple definition. A city which performs well in six characteristics, belongs self decisive, independent and aware citizens. Those six characteristics are, uh, as, you can see, uh, as, as you can see on my slide, smart economy, smart mobility, environment living, people and governance. I'm going to. Uh, I'm not going to delve deeply on these details because because uh, because I, uh, because I would just like to offer you the technical the, uh, technical and uh, proposals of, of, of how we can replicate this concept in Indonesia. Next, so I would like to. Uh, I would like you uh, uh, to. Uh, I would like to offer you two examples that are uh, in which IoT has been replicated successfully in Europe. One is in Santander. In Spain, and one is Padova in Italy. Both of them are are, are done by professors from, uh, from the local university. Santander, where uh, the smart uh, the Santander IoT version was built by uh, professors from University of Cantabria, and in Italy, professors of University of Padua uh, built a uh, built a smaller version of what uh, what the uh, people at University of Cantabria has done. Next. We will focus on Santander. That uh, that is a very small city, just with a population of two hundred ten thousand on uh, on the north of Spain. And uh, the way they uh, they uh, did this research is that they create that they transform the city into a test bed of uh, of, uh, of different uh, of different sensors. 
So they, and so, and so they planted three around 300 sensors around around the city that add so that the citizens and the government can uh, can monitor uh, can monitor simple uh, simple stuff such as the uh, traffic movement and uh, parking lots and also the uh, public transport. The experiment for this test bed was uh, was completed within two years. And was completed back in 2014, and uh, uh, just yeah, just to give you an, uh, an outlook of what this experiment is like. Next, this was a uh, this was a satellite view of the city where you can see the yellow uh, yellow bubbles are actually the sensors they and uh, they have uh, they have planted within the just uh, within, uh, within the city uh, city streets, uh, the, uh, and uh, by using the sensor, the people can actually uh, can actually plan where to park. Oh, wow. and, and then uh, the next uh, the next time they would uh, they would like to drive into the city, and they also planted a small uh, as a sensor on top of their uh, of their buses, so that, so that people can uh, can just simply look at the and uh, look at the uh, and and look at the position and to estimate when's the next bus coming in. With uh, with and they also uh, they also have. Uh, and uh, a mobile app to, mo to monitor all of this stuff in one single mobile application with small smart sign down there. And this uh, uh, this experiment has been replicated in a smaller scale, and the experiment has been going on in Padova. Next, uh, just uh, just outside outside the city of Venice, I think uh, I think you all will be familiar with that, uh, with, that uh, with that city. And uh, because because this uh, this research is ongoing. They have just planted seven sensors today, and they are planting it on uh, on their local high street. Maybe uh, maybe just to put uh, things into context, uh, maybe they will. Uh, maybe it's comparable to uh, to us planting sensors within uh, on Swanson Street. And mm. uh, yeah, because they are uh, because they are only have seven sensors. They are uh, they currently only control parking lots and to monitor weather. Next. Now. Uh, we also have our own smart cities uh, because we have uh, deployed, uh, deployed Clue in five cities. Manado was the first one, and then was replicated in Jakarta, Bimo, Sidoarjo, and Gorontalo. But uh, the main difference is that this smart city was not, uh, was not done with the help of Internet of Things technology, but rather in mobile application. This was uh, this was because I believe that um, um, I believe that Indonesians have an increasing interest. And solutions uh, coming out from their mobile application, like, uh, that's why we have come up with applications such as Gojek, Grab, uh, Uber, and, uh, and also with, uh, and also with the uh, increase of interest in on our online shopping, online and mobile application has been what uh, has been the main uh, main draw for uh, for a better city governance. But the main uh, but the main difference of how uh, how Clue and Internet of Things are in, uh, are involved in the uh, in the policy making of the city. Is that the data collection process and complaints are mainly in initiated by the citizens, but in Internet of Things, all of these data can be monitored remotely by the uh, by, by the public servants or in the city government. Next, now um, uh, why am I proposing Internet of Things in Indonesia? Because one. We have a problem of it's not really a problem, but we have an issue of increasing urbanization in Indonesia. Currently, we have 60% of our population living and uh, living within the city borders, and this number will uh, will keep on increasing uh, uh, until 2015. And IoT is basically a cheap alternative to uh, to gather and collect uh, collect data. Basically, IoT can be as cheap as you want or as, as expensive as you want. It really depends on what the city needs are. Uh, and because uh, I, uh, IoT is very uh, is, uh, is very transparent, all all of the citizens can view what uh, what the um, what the problems facing in the uh, problems facing in the city, and also uh, the, uh, the, uh, the people can uh, can be uh, can be invited to uh, to seek alternative solutions uh, together, so as to create uh, to create better cooperation between the citizens and the government. Uh, and in uh, in my uh, in, uh, in my abstract, I suggested uh, that uh, that this and uh, that such testbed can be replicated in cities of Ternate and Salatiga. Uh, Sal uh, I thought Salatiga was a uh, was a uh, was a good uh, good yes as 
good example for uh, for this experiment because one, its population is not too big. It's, uh, it's only two hundred. It has only two hundred four thousand citizens uh, within the city borders, and it is it is also comfortably located within uh, within cent uh, central Java. It is just in the middle of Samarang, Yogyakarta, and Surakarta, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so that um, so that I believe that if we relocate this and um, if we replicate this experiment in Salatiga, all three cities, excluding uh, and and Salatiga, can feel the benefit because of the high interaction of uh, people movement and uh, and goods uh, and, and goods with, uh, within the cent uh, within, within the central Java. Uh, just, uh, just before I uh, just before I. Uh, started and uh, start, uh, started the speech. The moderator actually asked me why Ternate. <laughs> Ternate has uh, has uh, Ternate in North Maluku has where well, I has well ob uh, obviously less uh, less prepared better and uh, less infrastructure than uh, the, uh, the city counterparts in uh, in Java. But because, uh, because I believe that uh, that Ternate is uh, located in uh, in the eastern part of Indonesia, I think it will be uh, it will be very good opportunity to show that no city should be left behind in, deve in developing of Indonesia. Next. So what are the issues in replicating this experiment? The first thing, uh, the first issue, the first barrier is political because uh, at the moment in Indonesia there is no, um, no significant interest in this, in this industry. For example, uh, let's compare it with Telstra. For example, Telstra is the biggest, uh, is, is the uh, biggest Source of encouragement for us engineering students in uh, RMIT to uh, to create new projects for uh, new uh, new uh, projects involving Internet of Things, and also there are the government and uh, the Indonesian government has some regulations against importing IoT sensors and devices. Uh, just last uh, last October, I read a news article that uh, that says the director general for the Ministry of Trade, I believe, actually uh, actually says. Uh, that Indonesia is currently blocking importing uh, such sensors because uh, uh, because they want to imp they want to imp uh, they want to make sure that we have the appropriate market and as well we have uh, as well as we have to have the appropriate level of our own producing sensors. But uh, for the, for the time being, because we have a lot of our uh, our own sensors created and uh, being manufactured in China and Europe, I don't think this will be likely in the near future. So this, uh, I think this regulation should be specifically improved to cater this experiment. The second is te uh, technical issue with, I uh, with IoT. The S in IoT stands for security. Anybody can guess what it means? It is not secure at all. <laughs> uh, IoT has a, has, a, has, a very, uh, has a very known issue, has a very known problem that people can easily hack into any of the, uh, into any of the devices for any nefarious purposes. But, uh, so, uh, so, the, uh, so the only uh, the only security we can is just to protect our uh, protect the, uh, the people's uh, the uh, the people's and the uh, and the government's own computers, and that's all we can do at best. The problem is financial because IoT is very new concept in Indonesia. It's very relatively unheard of. So, uh, so uh, I think the financial will be cost in training public servants and the engineers uh, to, uh, to operate and uh, to monitor the, uh, the networks. Next, so I uh, would like to end uh, with this. I would like to propose to turn an Indonesian city into a smart city testbed. Like, uh, like I said, uh, I personally suggested Salatiga in Central Java and Ternate in uh, North Maluku because they have less than 250,000 citizens. The bigger this and uh, the citizens a uh, city have, it's, uh, it will be harder, I believe, to create, uh, create an experiment uh, without really affecting. Uh, without really uh, without affecting the people in a very bad way because you will uh, you will have a lot of roots being uh, being dig up just for the purpose of an, uh, an experiment which is temporary and also the, uh, these uh, those two cities are I believe are very easy to access uh, to uh, to other uh, to other cities like for example I said Salatika Salatika is with, uh, located in in the middle of three larger cities. And Ternate is actually the largest in the area in, pro in the province of North Maluku. And if that, uh, those experiment, uh, experiments are, are done and completed, we can actually scale it outwards and upwards. We can plant more sensors uh, and, and within, a, within the appropriate time range. And we can also invite local citizens uh, to, uh, 
local local citizens to uh, to be involved in this project. I think uh, by by including university lecturers and university engineering students, we can actually also improve their uh, the knowledge of the, uh, of the current technology. So I think uh, by uh, by doing this experiment, uh, the benefits are far outweigh the cost. I think that will be all for closing. I would like to thank the ISDF committee for inviting uh, for inviting me because uh, when I first I came here I came here as a student. I have uh, I have no set I have uh, I I really cannot guess that I, I will be in this side of the lecture hall rather than sitting in uh, sitting in as uh, with with, uh, with all of you in this evening. Thank you very much for having me. I think we will be opening the session for questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris.